Hiya, I'm Petula, coach and host here of All Things Agile. And today we're going to be talking about why every Scrum Master should be learning Agile coaching skills. So if you're curious, let's get started. So if you know me for a while, you know that I coach and that I train folks to become Agile coaches. But you might not also know that I was once a Scrum Master. And actually, this is why I'm making this video, because when I discovered Agile coaching, I felt like my superpowers got really heightened. And I think those are a set of skills and stances that can really help anybody, really, uh, a product owner even, and an Agile manager. But we're really focusing on you as a Scrum Master, helping your teams. And I think there's a really perfect match of the skills and stances of Agile coaching for you to learn and use here. Now, why do I say this? I say this because I see a lot of people getting super excited to start their careers as Scrum Masters right now. And I have to tell you, one of the things that I discovered that made me make a shift or at least gain more understanding and broadening my skills was understanding, in the end, it's not just about the teams and it's not just about Scrum. And it's not just coming in and telling people how to do things and here's what you do to become Agile. So having a complete different approach on how I co-create with people, how I collaborate with them, how I support and serve them, is really what made it possible for me to be a successful servant leader. And I think most people that go into professions such as Agile Coaching and Scrum Master, what they're trying to do is, hey, I want to help others, I want to serve others. So ultimately, what got me hooked in agile coaching is because I was really interested in growing people so that they could grow their organizations. Now, instead of coming in as the expert who tells people what to do and who chooses a specific framework, I was interested in, in something else. And I think that's a really powerful place for you to establish yourself if you really want to serve others. Um, I will be talking about certifications in another video, but I will also say I hope that through this video you can see that there's a lot of craziness with certification and how you can or cannot become a Scrum Master. And I think in this particular world, we're now 2022, we don't know how it's going to be later, but I feel there's a lot of focus on techniques and on very surface level elements of agility that ultimately are not what your clients are looking for. And therefore, I just don't think you're going to be that effective in supporting them in the long run. As always, I give you a little bit more explanations and thinking in the blog post. You know, reading is different than just listening. And if you're interested in knowing more about the work of Barry Overeem, who was the first person I think who introduced um, thinking of a Scrum Master as something more than just no Scrum, do Scrum, even though the community was already evolving past that, he was the first person who I feel like codified that idea. And then obviously there is Lisa Adkins, the person who actually created or coined the idea of an Agile coach. So what we're going to look into is a mix of stances and skills of the agile coaching profession, if you will, that I think are super beneficial if you are leading teams as a Scrum Master. The first skill is communication. And communication is a great skill in general, but I'm not talking about the generic communication skills. And here I am talking about um, the fact that you will need to speak with people that have very different concerns, very different needs. Developers and managers just don't see their work and their uh, world in the same way, in the same light. And, you know, they face different problems. They respond to different accountabilities in the organization. And you're helping all of them, quite honestly. Um, you will need to operate in different levels of hierarchy in the organization if you really want to be effective, because the problem is never really localized. So moving forward with agility, with flexibility means for them and for you as well, that your language and that your attitude needs to adapt. I guess I would also mention here in the bracket of communication that learning things like, um, I'm not just talking post-it, but visual communication in general, helping people like literally see visually what they are saying and what they are agreeing uh, and discussing, it's highly valuable and that's the skill and it's under the umbrella of communication. 
disagreement is opportunity. You need to truly believe that to help people successfully navigate conflict. Differences of, of opinion that are not tended to nicely when they arise can escalate to become some hairy conflicts later on that are so much more emotional and difficult in nature. So having emotional intelligence, which means understanding yourself but also others, is absolutely key for you here. And um, you know, not only for you to know how and when to intervene and techniques to do so, but also when not to do anything, because you can't solve for everything all the time. L lastly, I would say it's not just about you as far as conflict solving for the teams or for the groups that you are uh, serving. In the end, you're also, it's important that you build capability for conversation, for them to learn how to move forward, uh, move forward agreeing or disagreeing and creating a space in which that can be done safely and with a lot of maturity with or without your presence. Then there is facilitation, which is the skill of helping people have meaningful conversations. You know, and those could be some of those conversations that we talked about that lead to conflict and how we manage conflict. But many times they're not that um, hairy and they might just be conversations where you're supporting people to achieve a goal or conversations where decisions are made or where knowledge is transferred, etc. So what you do through facilitation is that you help others step out of their very individual view and they're out of their crystallized opinions and then create dialogue. It is not easy to see the world from other people's point of view sometimes. For you as a facilitator, it's gonna be a little bit harder because you have to remain in a neutral stance. Your opinion doesn't really matter. You're there to help structure the conversations that other people are having. Um, that's what you really do as a facilitator it has to do a lot less with like how do you run a sprint planning and more so with how do we make this meeting a safe space? How do we create spaces where the conversations can happen in a way that all of the voices in the room get decent airtime? All of the voices, all of the opinions are heard. And then there is coaching, which is such a misunderstood profession and skill set. Uh, coaching is not just coming in and having a chat with people. It's also not just coming in and dropping a question and waiting for things to happen. Coaching is really a, a thought provoking process in which you're challenging assumptions. You are creating positive move forward and you are creating a synergy and a space for deep personal growth. Coaching cannot, will not work when it's imposed on people. It doesn't work that way. It, there has to be a willingness on the receiving end, a team, an individual. They have to want to do it because it is uncomfortable, because it requires a lot of trust and a lot of vulnerability to explore options for themselves. It's also not a silver bullet and not something that you can use in every single situation. Yet, I think that it's through coaching that you create what I call team independence. You build that independence from you and even from others. It's definitely a skill set that when you really get it right, you put your teams in the path of self-management and you get to help and to serve people in their journey for their personal growth. And yes, leadership is also a skill set. So let's face it, if there is an agile transformation or something like that happening in an organization, there will be resistance, there will be dissonance. And my personal favorite, that will be backpedaling from the management. Not because they're mean, but because at some point with the with the changes, with the transformation, everybody will notice the you know management and executives included that in order for things to work, everybody will need to change a lot or a little. So if you don't really honor that, you're gonna create uh, uh, an environment where you actually break trust with the employees. So agile coaches 
they lead agile change. They, they must be the thought leaders that host those candid conversations and challenge the status quo and speak of the um, unspeakable, you know, being that kind of gentle disruptor. So just think that if the agile coach and the scrum master for that matter, if they shy away from these hard and complex conversations, how can anybody else expect to feel safe and able to do so? So leadership is a very important skill set for you to develop as a scrum master, as an agile coach, because you are going to be a leader doer, leading by example, really leading the way. So there you have it. Those are some of the skills that I consider must have for any agile coach and therefore for any scrum master. Agile coaching is not this elite thing. Agile coaching is not more than the scrum master when done right. And in fact, there is a video by Alyssa Atkins that I'm going to link for you. And she had said that a while ago. And sometimes people lose context of these things, but yeah, it's not one or the other. Just consider that if you are a scrum master and if you're really keen on scrum, you're more like a, a scrum coach than just simply a scrum master or that's what I wish for you for your success. It definitely was the change maker in my career. It was the turning point when I made that sort of decision and expanded my skills away from Scrum and in fact, away from just the technicalities of agility because you know, Agile keeps evolving and so do people. This video though has reached an end. I would love to know what are some of the skills that you really got excited about or that maybe you were having a hard time with. Let me know and uh, I can even maybe have a video specifically on those if that is useful. I'll stop the video here. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.